Thanks, Sara. Well, my correspondents have just spoken to you about the first two macroeconomic objectives. I'm now going to introduce to you the third, the control of unemployment. What is this? Well, unemployment occurs when a person is available to work and seeking work, but is currently without the work. The percentage of those in labour force who are unemployed is measured by an unemployment rate. In the UK, the official unemployment figure refers to those who are both out of work and claiming benefits. People aged 16 to 65 are known as the population of working age. Unemployment isn't a good thing, so it's considered a disadvantage, right? But it does have some advantages. Some disadvantages are that the, that the unemployment rate is not very accurate. Because not everyone who's unemployed stays at home being unemployed. Some people could have a hidden job. This is also known as the hidden employment. They receive the cash in hand and there's no record of this. So they don't have to pay tax. Another disadvantage is that not everyone who is unemployed is actively seeking a job. They may be receiving benefits, therefore see no bother to work. In this case, the government is wasting money on lazy people, whereas it could be using this money for the development of the economy. And lastly, the benefits given out exclude housewives. This is a great disadvantage and highly unfair because housewives work. They're cleaning, cooking, taking care of all those kids and everything else that comes with it. But as there is a downside to something, there's always an upside, right? Unemployment is an advantage because the government can use the unemployment rate to compare with the previous year and analyze whether it has increased or decreased. And they can also use the rate to set their policies. Unemployment can be a hazardous cost to the economy. The three main costs of unemployment are to the person who is employed, society and the economy. To the person, it may cause depression, alcoholism, drugs, and it would also mean a decrease to their standards of living. To the society, it may mean an increase in crime, as you know, because because they are unemployed, they have nothing to live for and they're nothing to live, and the only way they can raise money is to steal. And to the economy, it means the government spends a lot more. They spend on the police force due to the increase in crimes in society, or to the NHS to provide more health. Well, and to the social benefits for the unemployed. So unemployment across the nation would mean that aggregate demand decreases, which we learned previously. There are actually a few types of unemployment, not to make it more confusing. For example, there is frictional, structural, cyclical, seasonal, technological, and regional unemployment. I'm gonna explain the first three. Frictional unemployment is the period of time where people are temporarily unemployed because they're switching the jobs. It is a short-term unemployment and occurs when people may be looking for more interesting jobs. Right, the next, the next unemployment I'm going to explain is structural unemployment. It is caused by the changes in the structure of an industry. It occurs when a major industry is suffering a permanent decline in the demand for its product. And this problem becomes even more serious if the industry is immobile. For example, the coal mines in Wales. And lastly, cyclical unemployment. This is considered the worst type of unemployment. It happens when the total spending in the economy is too low to purchase all the goods and services which could be produced if the labor, labor force was fully employed. The government aims to attain sustainable economic growth and they absolutely cannot do this when there is unemployment. So, the government uses its policies to attain sustained economic growth. Hence, 
leading to a balance of payment. One of the policies they use is fiscal policy. This is based on how much the government spends and how much income tax is paid or has to be paid. When there is high unemployment, government spends more money in such things as projects and so on, as I had mentioned earlier. This leads to jobs being available. When everyone is employed, there is an increase in their disposable income, hence an increase in their spending. As spending increases, so people are buying more, which leads to an increase in aggregate demand, which we learned about earlier. In the case of income tax, the taxes will decrease as there is hardly anyone working, so therefore cannot pay taxes. When the income tax is decreased, people can earn more, therefore their spending begins to increase, and so does their aggregate demand. With the fiscal policy in place, employment has increased. But when there is low unemployment, the opposite happens. Government spending decreases, thereby decreasing the number of jobs, disposable income, spending and aggregate demand. The income tax increases, hence there are less jobs, disposable income and spending again, decreases as well as aggregate demand. This leads back to high unemployment. That's why the government tries to keep a balance of payments and a balance of everything, because high unemployment destroys a country's economy, but when there's low unemployment, this just leads us back to unemployment. Over to you, Larissa.